The final type of calibration that we'll look at is what's known as an internal standard. And this one is a little bit different from all the rest of them uh, for standard edition and uh, a typical uh, calibration curve. Um, we use the analyte that we're interested in to make the calibration curve. An internal standard is a little bit different because we use a standard that is different from our analyte. Right? Instead of using the thing that we're trying to measure to make our calibration curve, we actually use a completely different uh, chemical. Um, and why would we need to do this? Uh, so the idea is that this is, this is necessary if we have, for example, uh, a technique where, we're, where we can't control exact volumes very well. Uh, for example, uh, in many chromatographic methods, a small amount of volume is injected into a, you know, for example, a gas chromatogram or a liquid chroma chromatograph. Um, and it's very difficult to get the exact same volume every time. Uh, and that can make it hard to, you know, know exactly how much of, you know, to make a standard know exactly how much you put into your uh, analytical measurement. Uh, so, can, it, you know, you can't control exact volumes very well, um, or you, you um, lose volume, or should I, I should say lose uh, sample, in the process of doing measurements. So, you know, if you're doing something where, um, you know, you know you're going to lose sample because of just the way things are done, you know, some amount of it will be lost to evaporation or to something else. Um, basically, the idea of an internal standard is it's something that will carry along in your solution and that anything that happens to your analyte also happens to the inter internal standard. So if you lose some of your analyte, you also lose some of the internal standard. Um, and that it gives you a way to track you know, the, the ratio between them rather than measuring concentrations directly. Um, so things that we want for an internal standard are that we want the signal from our uh, internal standard is easy to measure separated from the analyte. Right, we can tell them apart. From each other so we know which signal is from our analyte that we're interested in and which signal is due to the internal standard. Um, the relative response must be constant so this is basically the ratio of the response to the internal standard and the, the response to the analyte. And this must be constant over a range of concentrations. And one of the requirements that we need is that the um, analyte and internal standard are chemically similar. So we want something that is going to behave similarly in, in the process of any reactions that are happening um, for both the standard and the analyte. You know, they're roughly the same size, have the same sort of reactivity. Um, so for example, you know, a good standard, say that you're measuring benzene, uh, a good standard internal standard for benzene would be something like toluene, where we just have an extra methyl group. Um, right, and so these two are very chemically similar, similar masses, um, but they have to be different enough that you can tell them apart from each other in whatever sample that you're analyzing, whatever technique you're using to analyze your sample.